Number one is this. What do you do and why do you do it? What do you do and why do you do it? See, the whole essence of this passage is that you ought to be busy for the kingdom of God, that you ought to be serving others for the kingdom of God, that when you don't serve others, you are, your tendency is to be focused entirely on yourselves. So ask yourself the question, what are you doing? Where are you serving? Where, or have you found your gifts and put them to work for the kingdom of God? Have you found your talents and put them to work for the kingdom of God? Have you found your passions? Have you found your abilities and have put them to work for the kingdom of God? The fact is every one of us should find somewhere to serve and go about it passionately, go about it urgently, go about it uh, uh, vigorously, all for one reason, and that is to please God. Look at how Paul said in Romans we should serve. Do not lack diligence and zeal. Be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Filled up with zeal, fervency in spirit, serving the Lord. Listen, we are not to come to church. We are not to serve in the kingdom of God just so we can check it off the list and say we've done it. No, that there ought to be a passion, there ought to be a fervency about what you and I do for Jesus. See, you can tell when someone is passionate about something. You're not fooling anybody. Our, our grandkids have started to play sports. If you'll indulge me in a couple of grandkids illustrations today, just to, well, just because I want to. But um, our grandkids started, Jax, Judd, and Lucas, five, four, and three, they've started to play sports. And Judd, Judd, our four-year-old, played baseball for the first time this year. I took him to practice, and this was him uh, playing. Now, practice is going on. The coach is pitching. Somebody's trying to hit. What you don't hear me saying is, Judd, put your glove on. Judd, pay attention. Judd, look at the coach. You don't hear me saying it. You don't hear the other coaches who are saying the same thing as well, over and over and over again. But can I tell you? I don't know if you can pick up on it from the video. He ain't that passionate about baseball. <laughs> it's hard to discern, isn't it? There's just not a whole lot of passion. Now, there's some passion in kicking the dirt around. Uh, there's some passion in playing outside. But what you don't see on the camera over here is baseball's going on. He's just not real passionate about baseball and can we be honest it shows and we laugh at the kids but that's how most Christians serve Jesus kind of ho-hum dispassionate if I get around to it is that the way we ought to approach ministry? Paul said in Ephesians 6, 6, don't work only while being washed as people pleasers, but as slaves of Christ, doing God's will from your heart. That's how we're supposed to serve Christ, as a slave passionately serving God from the heart. What do you do and why do you do it? Every person in the building this morning needs to find what you do. And do it with zeal. Don't do it for earthly accolades, but to serve Christ passionately with joy in your heart. Does that sound like your service to Christ this morning? Have you found a ministry that you serve with joy? That you're striving to hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Let me ask you a question. Can we just get honest for a moment, transparent? Is there anything you're doing for Christ this morning in ministry, serving the kingdom of God, helping people, that you expect to hear, well done, good and faithful servant from Jesus? Is there anything you're currently involved in right now that you're doing it with such passion, that you're doing it with such vigor and such zeal, that you're doing it with love for Jesus that you even expect to hear, well done, good and faithful servant? 